Welcome to the first episode of BI TV, your fortnightly recap of BI and analytics news, views, and reviews worldwide. Now, the first story we've got today is an interesting one. It's around big data, and it's a very you know, prevalent topic in the industry. I'm sure you all know about it, and you've read plenty about it. But what's interesting is there seems to be a fair bit of confusion around that topic. And there was a very interesting article written by Znet's Toby Wallop uh, recently that was actually entitled, Big Data Confusion, Blunting BI Spend. And so he was suggesting that because of all the hype that goes around this, it was actually causing a lot of confusion by potential buyers and it was meaning they were actually holding onto their purse strings a lot more than they have in the past. And he used some very interesting stats to reference this. He talked about the fact that over the last few years, the BI industry has uh, experienced uh, you know, double-digit growth, except uh, last year, 2012, uh, only experienced 6.8% uh, increase over 2011. Um, and he put some Gartner stats to uh, back that up. And so it was interesting that Gartner's Dan Summer as well talked about this and actually said that the term itself, big data, is causing a lot of confusion. So not so much how you implement it and what it actually um, entails, but the term itself. And he also said it's had a carry-on effect so that there's also a lot of confusion around what BI and analytics means now as well and how those terms are separate to big data. However, he did go on to say that you know, weak uh, economic environments in, in a lot of major economies across the world uh, has actually contributed to that as well. And he did also say that Gartner put out a, a large report back in February of this year that did suggest that over the long haul, the emergence of big data will have a positive impact on spending within this sector. Sticking with our big data theme for a minute, research company McKinsey & Company uh, recently put together a short video and it's called uh, Data Analytics three key challenges. And uh, there's probably more than three that I mentioned there, but the whole point about the uh, video is to try and help uh, dispel some myths around big data and also try and explain its usefulness so that people can actually put it to work. And so um, the, the video um, is, is given, and uh, the presentation is given by McKinsey director, um, Tim McGuire, and he, he makes a couple of really, really good points. So he starts off by talking about having to you know, analyze the right data. And it sounds obvious, but in this world of big data, where people want to collect more and more of it, um, you know, understanding what you really want to achieve through that is extremely important. Um, he talks about you know, making sure you develop the right modeling um, capabilities as well. Um, and you know, back to that sort of first point, he links it and he says, you know, really know what you want to achieve from your data analysis. And you've got to start at that point. So there's no point in collecting a vast amount of it unless you really intend to use it properly. And then he says, importantly, once you've got that information, you've got to make sure that you ask the right questions of your data. And then the last point within the video, I think is probably the most crucial. And he says, you've got to establish a mindset that enables you to take action from that data. So you can't have a situation where organizations uh, do not empower their users to actually act from the information they receive from their BI and analytics projects. And so it's only a four and a half minute video and it's well worth your time to have a look. So now I want to move on to mobile BI. So you know, that's a topic within the industry that's been around for a few years now. And I think we're starting to get past the hype and starting to get into uh, a, 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 an era where people are really trying to implement. And so uh, it's becoming increasingly pervasive. And so if you're actually getting to the stage where you're thinking about deploying, it's well worth having a read of Howard Dresden's latest mobile BI market study, which can be downloaded for free from the Yellowfin website. So on the topic, there was a really good uh, interview with independent BI analyst William McKnight on searchbusinessanalytics.com's uh, website by senior editor Craig Stedman. And he covered a couple of really important issues within that. So, I mean, the first thing that William started talking about were the design implications around mobile BI. And so primarily around what the smaller screen means for you and means the type of KPIs you can deliver to people through those types of devices. And so that really tied into his second point that he made around focusing on what matters. So he's saying to forget the gimmicks and just focus on the really crucial core information that you're trying to deliver to people anywhere at any time. And so I think it's really worth your time checking out the 11-minute podcast, which is on uh, SBA's uh, website. And so you can get McKnight's take on a couple of really crucial things, such as um, you know, whether mobile BI is still a niche uh, technology or whether it's becoming more mainstream, um, and also how you know, the, the mobility uh, of mobile BI changes companies' approach to BI in general. 
And the other thing, of course, is around all the security issues that people face when they're thinking about rolling out a mobile BI deployment. So sticking with mobile BI for a minute, um, research and advisory firm Aberdeen Group recently came out with a new study on mobile BI and it's entitled Decisions on the Move Mobile BI 2013. Uh, it's an interesting study and I'll share some of the highlights with you now. So uh, they, they found that 52% uh, of businesses uh, said or believed that mobile BI, if deployed correctly, is a distinct advantage. Uh, it, it also found that 43% uh, of businesses you know, find that um, sales staff, when they're uh, out in the field and on the road, actually lack the information they need to interact uh, with customers as they would like. And uh, it's also interesting to note that uh, the survey also found uh, that sales teams are you know, the number one group that ends up adopting mobile BI. In fact, it found that two thirds of current adopters actually work in some sort of sales role. Now, the survey was based on uh, over 300 responses from different organisations uh, across the world. It was conducted in March this year and you can access it on the uh, Aberdeen website. The next article that I want to talk about is a really interesting one that was on, published on enterpriseappstoday.com and it was an interview with uh, BI thought leader Howard Dresner. And it was about the uh, generational shift that he's seeing with BI technologies and their users. And it also coincides with the release of his latest Wisdom of Crowds report. And he was essentially saying at the beginning of the article that he, he thinks a lot of the uh, increase in uh, user adoption and user penetration throughout organisations can be attributed to the fact that uh, more education institutions now have access to uh, BI technology. And so it was also interesting to note that, you know, unsurprisingly, uh, his latest Wisdom of Crowd study uh, you know, revealed that 64% you know, um, of organisations uh, you know, now have 11% or more of their employees having access to BI, which is quite a big shift from where it used to be. Um, also, significantly, there's a very aggressive uh, expansion plans as well. So 72% of those respondent organisations also said that um, by 2016, they plan to have at least 41% of their employees with access to BI. Um, the study also revealed that, you know, I, th I think probably we expected this, but executive management remain, you know, the key target group for most uh, BI deployments. And it was interesting to note though that the top uh, BI priorities for 2013 uh, were revealed in the study as dashboards, self-service BI and data visualisation. So self-service BI is still talking about that progression of BI and, and you know, making it a more business driven and business oriented you know, um, implementation. But I, I think what is significant is the fact that dashboards and data visualisation, so the mainstays of BI are still key and are still the core of what people look for in a business intelligence solution. It was also in the article, uh, the interview that he had, and also within the study, you know, it, it was revealed and Dresden talked about, you know, a shift away from traditional BI. So he was talking about how that, uh, that shift away from that and, and to more user-oriented, uh, you know, BI technology is really helping to drive that user penetration rate as well in conjunction with uh, more access to the technology through education institutions. And so... It's a very in-depth study, it's over 100 pages, uh, it's a good read, and of course you can download for free from uh, the Yellowfin website, or you can simply search for it on Google, you can search for Download 2013 Wisdom of Crowds Business Intelligence Market Study. And so lastly, I want to draw your attention to a really engaging conversation that's going on on the Business Intelligence Professionals LinkedIn group at the moment. And it's around the topic, does big data mean the death of business intelligence? And there's a lot of people joining the conversation with a lot of competing views. And some people are talking about what we discussed before about how the term big data, you know, is being misused and there's confusion around it and how that interacts with the term business intelligence and analytics. And then there's also people who are saying, well, no, of course it doesn't mean the death of, you know, BI because big data just means that there's more data to discover that people want to effectively use to make better decisions. So it's well worth joining the conversation. What do you think? Well, that's it for this episode of BI.TV and we're going to catch you next time for the second instalment. Thanks for joining us.